Chapter 16 From outside the bus, I saw Malachi begin to clap. Asshole. I moved to the exit, the same one Malachi had stepped out of when this whole shit show began, and felt my senses sharpen with each step. The poll told me people were gathering beyond the walls of the library, and logic told me that emergency responders would be here soon enough. Do not worry, little baby A.B., Malachi said, clasping his hands together. The sons of the golden future have powerful friends in high places. We still have a few minutes before we're interrupted. I stepped off the bus and turned my entire focus on Malachi. Although every scrape, bruise, and cut yelped at me, the emotional noise was finally quieted, and I could hear Malachi as plain as day. That is if there was anything to hear. It wasn't like Valdez or even Murph. I could sense the piano wire going straight through my brother, and the vibrations came down the line undisturbed. But instead of the rich twangs of complex emotion, the only thing the pole communicated to me was... indifference. Total apathy. I had felt emotion from him before. I was sure of it. Even between the booze and the other Nazi fucks, I had felt his genuine surprise. But now, now he just didn't care. It was as if he simply turned off his emotions. What happened to you, Malachi? I asked, almost pleading. He grinned, and those sparkling eyes now looked completely dead. Come now, isn't it obvious? I found Jesus. I accepted the Lord our Savior into my heart and embraced the Lord's plan for my life. I shook my head. Uh, this isn't right. I looked around the remains of Josephine's office. The walls that had crumbled into the rest of the library. The bodies littered amongst the debris. The bus. That fucking bus. You meant to kill her, I said. Just another black life lost in the race war the Sons of the Golden Future is adamant about starting. Malachi tipped a flat palm back and forth. More or less. That's why Samson tried to plant the knife on me, I continued. Malachi waved the idea aside. Oh, 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 oh. do not get me started with that megalomaniac. I ticked off my fingers. Josephine, the hospital, Murph's liquor store, my own goddamn brother. Malachi shoved his hands into his pockets and waited. I felt nothing coming from him, so I focused and sent my own vibrations down the wire. The sons of the golden future have been targeting me, I growled. You're helping them, trying to get under my skin, draw me out. Malachi lifted his shoulders in an indifferent, mocking shrug. Clarity is a bitch. I focused again on the reverse pull and saw Malachi's eye twitch in response. Why are they doing this? Why are you helping them? Where did things go so wrong between us? Malachi's eye twitched again, but I still felt nothing substantive from him. Wait, strike that. I was picking up the faintest vibrations of hate. Oh, but I did pray for you, brother, Malachi said softly. Jesus, fuck. I backhanded a slick of blood from my mouth, flicking it to the ground before spreading my arms in front of Malachi. Well, here I am, I growled. You want me? Come and get me. In a flash, Malachi sprung forward, and we locked arms, each with a hand pulling at the other's head. Muscles strained, and veins popped as fire met fire. Ugh, I never thought that today would be the day, Malachi breathed as we each struggled for dominance. But here we stand through some act of divine intervention. Fuck you! Malachi kicked at my foot and used his weight to throw me off balance. He pulled me forward and threw his first punch at the same time. The blow connected with my jaw, and stars exploded as I spun like a fucking top before slamming into the bus. Whether intentional or not, Malachi had let me wear myself out with his contingent of disposable brawlers. He was bigger, stronger, and way less emotionally drained. Fuck me. I needed a drink. 
It is time to repent, Brother Abraham, Malachi bellowed. It is time to confess your sins and beg God for his gift of forgiveness. Malachi grabbed the front of my shirt and hoisted me up against the side of the bus, pressing his forearm into my throat. Yeah, the fucker definitely had more energy. How this ends is all up to you, little brother, Malachi said, pushing me against the bus until the glass behind my head cracked. But know that no matter what path you choose, I will continue to pray for you. Malachi, I wheezed. He eased the pressure, eyes brightening. Speak, brother. F fuck off. I let go of his forearm and slammed both palms into his ears, clapping his head with as much force as I could muster. The effect was immediate, and Malachi stumbled back, dropping me to my feet. Even the piano wire responded to that one, despite his inexplicable apathy, and my own ears rang in sympathy. Malachi grunted angrily. Oh, you just never learn. And you're just a self-righteous, narrow-minded fuck, I spat back. Makes us about even in my book. Malachi rose to his full height and squared his shoulders. His voice boomed with that infuriating evangelical lilt. There is but only one book, Brother Abraham. Oh, shove it up, your cunt. I scooped up a random hardcover and flung it, the edge of the spine connecting with Malachi's forehead. He grunted again as blood trickled down from the cut, painting his face in streaks of red. He really did look mad. I charged him, and as I saw Malachi's fists go up, I went low, dropping to a slide and punching at the back of his knee. He twisted as he fell to a knee, and I rolled, scooping up more books as I went. Whip, whip. Two more hardcovers bounced off Malachi's head, leaving minor cuts in their wake. Nothing serious, and I certainly didn't need a psychic connection to tell it was pissing him off. Abraham! Malachi boomed. I grabbed the back of one of the chairs Valdez and I were sitting in ages ago and swung it. Malachi spun and hunched, covering his head and letting the chair explode against his back. He turned his head and glared over his shoulder at me. Yeah, he was definitely mad now. He pivoted to face me and stepped forward, brushing off the splinters. Repent, Abraham? Not likely. He grabbed my shirt and yanked me close. Repent? I grabbed his shirt. Why don't you fucking pray on this? We headbutted simultaneously, and I have no idea what happened next because blackness finally swept over me. Honestly, it was a little bit of a relief. But that relief lasted only until I swam back to consciousness, floating through the blackness. Wait, shit. I was floating through the air. No, scratch that. Malachi was holding me over his head and slowly turning in the wreckage of Josephine's office. There was one remaining floor-to-ceiling window, undamaged by the bus, and I saw it clearly as Malachi hurled me through it. Glass exploded, and I tumbled across the sidewalk and onto the pavement. Glass and asphalt bit into my skin as I skidded across the parking lot. I groaned, and my vision swam as consciousness threatened to be elusive. The poll informed me that more onlookers had gathered at the edges of the parking lot. I rolled onto my back and coughed. No, this wasn't looking very good, and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to take much more of Malachi's brotherly love. I tried pushing myself up to get a bead on the fucker, but every inch of my body protested. Malachi stepped through the shattered window before I collapsed back onto the pavement. Nope, definitely not good. Blackness continued to creep along the edges of my vision, and suddenly, my brother filled my view. He crouched over me, grabbed a fistful of my shirt, and... Wham! Repent! Wham! Little brother! Wham! Repent! Malachi released my shirt, and I collapsed. I could already feel my face swelling from his punches. He took a step back and shook his head at me. I could feel the disgust radiating from him. It never had to be like this. He said softly. I turned my head, coughed, and spat blood. You just have to repent. Accept his divine forgiveness. I planted a palm against the pavement and pushed with all my might. My torso rose, 
but I had no energy to get my feet under me. I opened my mouth, but the words that came out were indecipherable. Malachi raised a melodramatic hand to his ear, squatting in front of me. What is it you say, little brother? They were distant, but I finally heard the sirens. Not that emergency responders were likely to help the situation, but it might slow Malachi down. I coughed again to clear my throat, and tried speaking again. I know you're not so poor, you can't buy yourself a fucking clue. I got my other hand under me and pushed up. Malachi shook his head again. You never cease to disappoint. Tell me then, little baby Aby. Clue me in. I slid a foot under me and braced myself, lifting my face in front of Malachi's. Fuck. Off. Just one person. Just one punch. It was an uppercut, and Malachi didn't see it coming. His head snapped back, and he tumbled across the parking lot. How's that for a fucking clue, you goddamn shit brain Jesus fuck? I sucked in a deep breath and listened as the sirens got louder. Blood spattered onto the pavement, and my fist ached like a motherfucker. I really needed a drink. I staggered to my feet just in time to see Malachi push himself up, rubbing his jaw and spitting out a tooth. The onlookers had piled up and closed in, emotional rods of rebar slamming into my chest, sending those unwanted vibrations through my quickly numbing body. Tears began spilling from my eyes, and they cut hot, wet trails down my cheeks. I had no idea where the emotion was coming from, but that was just the way it went when I was beaten and broken. A dozen feet away, Malachi straightened and turned that apathetic gaze to me. Ah, oh, little baby A.B. I bristled and spat blood. Is that really all you got? He mocked. I tried to think of Josephine. Or Valdez. Murph, maybe. Even Beckett fucking Miller. Some kind of light at the end of this miserable tunnel. Something, anything, that would give me an iota more energy to push through this shit show. The sirens got louder. Malachi cracked his knuckles. The shit show was about to get a hell of a lot shittier. All right. Fuck it. If you're going through hell. I rolled my shoulders and cracked my neck. I swiped more blood from my face, letting it drip from my fingertips to the pavement. I clenched my fists against the tremors that were attacking my muscles. If I'm going down, I'm going down punching. Malachi took another step and was immediately struck by a speeding pickup truck. Malachi went flying, smashing through another plate glass window and tumbling into the circulation desk. The truck skidded, and the passenger door flung open. Valdez yelled at me from behind the steering wheel. Come on, Abe, let's go! I stood in shock, looking from the wrecked library to my truck to the onlookers. What in the actual fuck just happened? Let's go! Valdez yelled again. I climbed into the truck and yanked the door shut. Josephine was lying in the back seat. Nice of you to finally join us, Mr. Owens, she said. I, uh, I sputtered in confusion. Valdez never left. I told her to go, but she never left. Fuck me. I felt a pressure in my chest and looked down to see Valdez pushing one of the emergency bottles of whiskey at me. Fuck me. In a complete daze, I cracked the bottle and took a long, deep swig. Don't tell me that fuck job is actually related to you. Drive, I groaned. My voice sounded like gravel. Just drive, Valdez. 